What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. Good morning. It is the Earthmaster out here on this uh, wonderful Wednesday, September 13th, 2023. It's about 11.34 a.m. California time. Latest quake shows uh, 2.2 up here around the, or uh, 2.9 around the Mediterranean. Also, a five-pointer coming in down here around the Red Sea, uh, specifically right on shore. It looks like just, well, right on land here near the uh, Eritrea area. That earthquake uh, coming in within the last hour as well. 5.0, 15 kilometers deep. Did see some larger movement overnight as well, including a 6.1 out here in the uh, West Chile Rise. Surprisingly, it's been a little while since we've seen any movement out there. Uh, that activity could enhance and contribute to more activity across the Peru Chile Trench. This is a divergent boundary, so we'll continue to keep an eye on the area around South America. Right now, a couple of smaller earthquakes there from yesterday, some fours. Uh, looking at the EMSC model globe here, uh, does show a handful of smaller quakes here into the Peru Chile Trench, although most of that is older uh, activity. Uh, filled in slightly here across the Solomon Islands and the Vanuatu region, it looks like. Let's go ahead and see what we got coming up here, or at least what took place earlier, 5.2 and a 5.2 but along different boundaries here, or along the same plate boundary, but uh, different locations along that plate boundary. Uh, New Zealand did have a little activity as well with a 4.5 near the Hicks Bay area. This one 101 kilometers deep, pretty deep. Uh, that's either going to be associated with a portion of the Kerberdeck Trench or the Hikarangi subduction zone. Uh, I think it's right about split here. Uh, but we'll continue to watch that for some uh, movement. New Zealand has been awfully quiet here in terms of uh, uh, earthquake activity. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the... Um, just want to see if that four-pointer showed up on the earthquake drums. It's going to be um, more visible. When was that? That was... Uh, this is actually yesterday. Literally almost 24, uh, 24 hours ago. So that's going to be the earthquake up here. As far as uh, movement today goes around the New Zealand area, there's not a whole lot to look at. Maybe some uh, smaller activity here. South Island area where that red dot is. Uh, but aside from that, uh, things look still continue to be calm out there across the area of New Zealand. All right, around the Indonesia area, the super, super deep earthquake from last night, 5.1. Almost 650 kilometers deep there into the Java Sea, the Java Trench, way down there into the subduction zone. As uh, far as any subsequent movement goes, it uh, looks like a little three activity up here. Some twos and threes across the Java Trench. Uh, but most of the activity today looks like it is uh, just continuing to remain clustered here around the Banda Sea, Maluka Sea region. Uh, Japan seen a small uptick in earthquake activity here in the three range. That's just off the coast there of uh, Tokyo, it looks like. Nothing showing up on the USGS model, but uh, that's because some of this... Uh, movement is below the threshold, and I believe these right here should have dropped off by now. We're getting close to dropping off across this area of the Pacific Plate. All right, let's see what else we got uh, for the Alaska region. Uh, over here on the uh, Canada side, Yukon Territories, it looks like um, 4.1 coming in late last night. For the most part, though, across the area of uh, Alaska looks typical out there across that plate boundary. Into the Pacific Northwest, well, there's that movement uh, across the Mount St. Helens area once again. Um, activity from yesterday, and it looks like a little bit today as well. I'm kind of curious to see what the total tally is as far as the earthquakes going on there. Mount St. Helens coming up on, uh, looks like almost 150 epicenters of earthquakes. Over the last 30 days there at Mount St. Helens. Continue to watch that and keep that uh, in the updates. Uh, let's see, anything going on for Northern California? A handful of smaller quakes, it looks like, in the plate boundary out here. San Andreas Fault, a uh, handful of smaller quakes in the last 24 hours. I really don't see anything above 2.5 out here across the West Coast for now, so... Somewhat uh, quiet. No major swarms going on around the San Andreas Fault for now. Uh, a little bit of activity across the oil fields here of Texas and Oklahoma 
And one earthquake here across the New Madrid seismic zone, a 1.8 near Blytheville, Arkansas, 13 kilometers deep there. <clears throat> All right, the Puerto Rico trench region, most of this activity here from yesterday, although we did see uh, a 3.4 up here towards the Puerto Rico trench, nothing major going on there yet. Uh, and there's that South America activity. Let me see what we got here for smaller quakes. Doesn't really look too active here today, but I expect that to change with this uh, divergent boundary activity taking place here. Should stir up some movement into the Peru uh, Chile Trench area. There's some of that activity across the Mediterranean. And it uh, looks like Iceland up here having a little bit of movement as well. Although I think this is from last night or yesterday. A little swarm of activity out here outside of the Jane Mayen region. All right, space weather activity. See if we got anything to chat about here for the, uh, for the update. Of course, we did have that G2 storm kick up um, earlier. Oh, yesterday should say did kick up uh, some nice auroras across the uh, polar regions let me see uh, if space weather uh, has any info on this there's that surprise geomagnetic storm even these guys are calling it an unexpected CME hit Earth's magnetic field on September 12th and sparked a G2 class geomagnetic storm um, this image here looks like it was taken by Matthew Morell in Minnesota. Central Minnesota caught some of the auroras out there. Pretty cool. All uh, forecasters did not see this coming. One surprise NOAA analyst called it a stealthy CME in retrospect. It was probably one of the many CMEs that left the sun on September 8th. There's some of those, but uh, nothing big. But it sure kicked up the uh, auroras pretty nicely there. All right, looking at the forecast, 99% chance for C-flare activity, M-flare at 55, X-flare around 10% chance. And let's see what we got here for the uh, current situation on the sunspots. There's not a whole lot of change from last night. Uh, still keeping an eye on this area right here. Uh, while the majority of these here are just kind of dissipating, we'll continue to watch this one here as well. Uh, but we're not re really not looking at any major threats right now for the flare department. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Nothing really forecasted here in the three-day geomagnetic forecast. That's the auroras. Uh, but we'll continue to watch that, uh, see if anything else sparks up here by surprise. Space weather, or uh, storm prediction center today here. Thunderstorm threat uh, across a good portion of the Intermountain West region. Looks like we do have a 2% chance of tornado probability down there in Texas and over here around the Connecticut area, Rhode Island region, all seen slight chance for tornado pro uh, possibility. Main threat today will probably just be that 2% tornado probability and a little bit of wind and some small hail. All right, uh, what else is there? I think that's about it, folks. I'm going to jump off here. Got to continue what I was doing here on the side, but just wanted to get a update in. Member drawing will be held in two days. Not the subscriber giveaway, but the uh, member drawing that we do every single month here on the 15th will be giving away um, some prizes there for the members. Make sure you become a member here on this channel. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later uh, in the evening time. Take care, folks. Stay safe.